I worked there for almost 17 years before I was promoted to associate professor and event of Kiel Park Medical College. And now I am at Oman Durar Super Specialty Hospital. There, as you know, it is uh, a lot of hand surgery, hand injuries that we see. And uh, the whole idea of this series of lectures for the next, for, say, about three weeks is going to be an introduction to hand injury management. As surgeons, whether we are specialists in plastic surgery or hand surgery or gastrointestinal surgery, whatever surgery, we will come across some injury to the hand at some time of our career. And we need to know what are the basics in the management of this. And that is not the only aim. That there are two other uh, uh, aims for this uh, introductory lecture. I need to get introduced to this new media of instruction because we are used to giving lectures to a live audience. And this is different. I, I, I mean, I'm talking to a computer and looking at the camera and talking to it. And uh, I suppose somebody said, there will be a time when you sit and talk to your computer. That is what is happening now. Anyway, now uh, I the second aim is to uh, give an introduction, as I said, to this. And also, I would like to talk about what are the lectures that are, in, that are waiting for us in the next three weeks. And lastly, I would like to talk about every day, I'm giving a small question or a problem to be solved by the general surgery team. Some small problem in hand surgery, which is very commonly encountered. For instance, we had a case of uh, compart acute compartment syndrome. And then we discussed about what are all the things that could be done to manage it. Today, there was a problem, and we'll discuss that problem at the end of every lecture, every day. Now, I'll just go to the screen so that we can see the presentation also. Yeah. Now, the thing is, as I said, this today is only to you get to know me and uh, I get to know you. And uh, most importantly, we both get to know the technology that is bringing us together. That is also very important because this is something that could have been unheard of a few years ago. And it is nice that uh, uh, the platform of learning general surgery is bringing us together on this uh, uh, thing. And I just saw Dr. Elango say this beautiful lecture. I mean, I am not into pancreatic surgery or anything, but it was interesting the way he was very focused on what the problem was at hand. Thank you, Dr. Sedhu. I learned a lot of things from you today. And uh, what we're going to talk about the next three weeks, that's what I said, I will be seeing that also. And then, of course, excluding Sundays and uh, the introduction to hand injuries. Now, hand injuries are something that they're going to see or everybody is going to see. And of course, the discussion about the cases I presented in the morning for your review. Now, hand injuries can be small like this one. You can get to see such injuries or they can be a little bigger like this one. You can get a bigger injury like this. Or sometimes you can even get bizarre injuries like this. Now, the thing is, this sort of bizarre injuries, I remember an incident about say about uh, 20 years ago when I was on duty at Government Stanley Hospital and uh, we were called at around 2 a.m. in the morning. We had just finished a surgery. We were called to see this patient with a cracker burst injury. Now in our part of the country, we get cracker burst injuries almost any time. It's not just during the festival seasons that we get these injuries, any time. And uh, sometimes they are country bombs that are bursting in their hands. For for instance, in, during funeral processions and uh, temple festivals. Now, when we were called to this patient, to see this patient, we had an observer with us. He was from, I think, Uzbekistan. He came with us. I had gone along with my uh, resident to see this patient. And on examination, there were multiple injuries. I mean, the uh, two or three fingers were shattered, the tendons were ruptured, then the bones were fractured. There was a skin loss, all that. And I said, let's do this, one, two, three, four, five. And uh, I just turned around and looked at the resident. He was looking at me with an amazed face. He said, uh, don't you get uh, shocked by anything? Because that injury was pretty shocking. Now, that was one lesson that we learned. 
when you have a major problem, sometimes you have injuries like this. When you have a major problem, break it down into small problems. Small problems and each small problem has got a small solution. So summing up all these small solutions, you get the big solution. So that is a very simple way of dealing with major hand injuries. However, we'll go in order and we'll see what the sequence in which we're going to see all the, uh, uh, the topics. Now, we need to understand what is it about the hand injury that is so different from other injuries? And what do we need to tell the patient and when do we need to refer? Now, the thing about hand injuries is sometimes you get a patient with a complete degloving of the uh, skin of the hand. But still, the patient will be able to do complete movements without any skin because his musculoskeletal unit is still intact. The same hand after reconstruction, after three weeks, you've done a fantastic flap cover, skin cover, you've done a tendon repair, everything you've done. You know how much movement there will be. That's all. There only what has happened in the meantime, what happened in these three weeks? What has happened in these three weeks is the work of somebody called nature, the healing by nature. We need to understand as far as hand injuries are concerned, this healing is both beneficial and at the same time detrimental. Because of the fibrosis and the scarring that occurs, the movements are, uh, are hindered. Now, in every injury, there are certain things that you need to understand and tell the patient also. And when do we need to refer the These are the things we'll be seeing as we go along. Here, we need to talk about the GIRFT concept. You might have heard of this. Get it right the first time. So if a patient is going to come with an injury, if you are able to do a fantastic, a good management right in the beginning, it is called the primary care. We need to give what is known as the complete primary early definitive management. Now each single word of this definition has got a meaning. Now complete means you're going to give a complete management. For instance, if there is a cut of the flexor tendon, there is a cut of the, ten, uh, the nerves, there is a cut of the vessel, there is a fracture of the bones, there is a loss of skin. All these have to be addressed complete. Second is primary. It needs to be done together at one time and early. It should be done uh, as early as possible. And all these must be done con the, for continuous good care of the hand. So this is the get it right the first time. Because once it gets delayed, I just told you, you've got your friend and your enemy, your, the mother nature, which is acting. You need to get nature on your side. Only then you can get a good result. You can never attempt to fight nature and try to get a good result. You will never be able to succeed. Now, when you're managing a hand injury, there are two things that are in your mind. First is anatomical continuity. That is the form going to reconstruct a finger, you're going to create the movement, everything. Second is you need to get back functional restoration. That is function. So two things are very important, form and function. Supposing a hand has been severed or the thumb or the finger has been totally cut off, you can put it back. You're giving it form. Now the question is, is it just enough to give it form? Definitely not. There is absolutely no point in giving it form if it is not going to function as far as the hand is concerned. So as far as the hand is concerned, your work as a surgeon starts with the surgery. In many other types of surgery, the treatment ends with a good surgery and follow-up. But for the as far as the hand is concerned, there are so many other things. It starts with the surgery, then your follow-up. We'll see all that as we go along. Now, peculiarities of hand injuries. Is it just suturing? Now, supposing I am a general surgeon and I see a patient with an injury to the hand. Is it enough if I just suture the wound? It is not enough most of the times because there are so many important structures underneath which can cause loss of function. As I told you, two things are very important, form and function. Please remember these two important points as we keep treating all hand injuries. As I said, the treatment starts with the surgery. Then what happens after that? 
I have done a fantastic surgery. I did a repair of the tendons. I did a repair of the nerves. I did a good fixation of the fractures. I did a good skin cover. Everything I have done. What next? My work is not over because I then have to go through the post-operative period. Supposing I have put back a hand, so many things can go wrong in the post-operative period. The vascularity can be compromised and it may go in for gangrene if I do not address it immediately. So that is one thing. I have to go follow up the patient through the early post-operative period. Then through the period of therapy, after the POP is taken off, after the wounds have healed, I need to follow up this patient through the hand therapy. The therapy is very important. When we say hand therapy, we need to remember it is not just mobilization of the finger. We also have to think about immobilization. See, you have heard of the concept of yin and the yang. Now, there are two things, day and night. So similarly, the yin and the yang. Similarly, for hand, as far as the hand injury management and the rehabilitation is concerned, we have got two important things, mobilization and immobilization. Both should be on our, the back of your mind when you are seeing a patient who is coming back to you for a review. These also should be followed up. Next, we have to go through the period of rehabilitation. Now, all these patients have to be rehabilitated back to their work. It is important to realize that these patients may not have the same function that they had. We should be able to help them and modify their function. We need the help of therapists. We, they've got certain people called us occupational therapist. For instance, a patient is not able to completely oppose the thumb and the index finger. In which situation he will, and supposing he is a, a clerk by occupation, he needs to write. In that situation, we need to modify his hand and give a pen which can be fitted into this hand. So that is the role of the occupational therapist. The next is we need to go through the period of follow-up and growth. Now, that is very important. You might have done an excellent surgery for a little child. What happens as the child grows? Is your uh, surgery working through the growth of the child? For instance, if I do a skin cover for a child with an injury who has got a, a skin loss and I put a skin graft, beautiful, it settles very nicely. What will happen when the child grows? Will the skin graft grow with the child or will there be a contracture? If there is a contracture, how do I treat it? And to avoid that contracture, what should I have done? All these points should be considered when you are managing a hand injury. The therapy, the role of therapy, when I think about the role of therapy, there are four different combinations that I can think of. You do an excellent surgery, but you do not follow it up with therapy. Or you do an excellent surgery, you follow it up with good therapy. Or a poor surgery, but you have an excellent therapist or a poor surgery and poor therapy. Obviously, even if you have done an excellent surgery, your therapy is not good, you may not get the optimal results. We know that we are supposed to get back two things. One is form, one is function. The form, as a surgeon, you are able to get it back. But the function is something that depends both on your surgical technique and your management and the therapy that is going to follow. Why this is important, we'll see soon. And excellent surgery and excellent therapy, definitely, it's fantastic. You get a good result. Now, again, poor surgery and good therapy will not help you at all because your therapy is going to get it going to a certain extent. But if your basic, basic surgery has not been good, your result, again, is not going to be good. And of course, obviously, poor surgery, poor therapy is not going to help you. Now, the whole reason for this is there is only one single structure, basic unit of reconstruction that is being used. That is the unit of collagen. For instance, if I have an injury on the skin, a cut injury, and I have a tendon injury, I have a fracture underneath, and I'm fixing the fracture with the K-wire, I'm repairing the tendon with a good suture material, and I'm suturing the skin. Now, all three are together in the same plane. Now, the unit that is used for reconstruction is the collagen. Collagen is the basic unit for reconstructing, for repairing all these structures. 
you have done the k-wire fixation but a bone healing is going to occur only with the basic unit of the collagen you have done the repair of the tendon but the healing is going to occur only with collagen and the formation of a good scar the third is the skin even here it is collagen that is being formed now imagine you have got one collagen on the skin you have got collagen healing the bone you have got collagen healing the tendon the collagen healing the bone must be strong and should withstand all forces the collagen that is healing the tendon must glide beautifully the collagen that is healing the skin should be scarless it should be soft it should be smooth now this is where the role of therapy comes in now now we have seen what are the things that we are going to see as we go along now there are certain topics that i wanted to talk about as we go along the first would be the basics of management the history examination documentation and decision making now when there is a patient with a hand injury there are certain things you need to do you need to understand as i said you need to understand what it is and examination of the patient examination of the injured hand sometimes the patient is going to come with a big bandage on his hand and with a lot of bleeding what do you do in that situation how do you tackle the problem when do you take him up for uh, repair or exploration and uh, documentation this is very important in these days of medical legal problems documentation is very important it is not only for the medical legal problem that you need to document it is also for your own critical self appraisal you do a reconstruction or a repair you need to follow it up has it really been good is this technique good we need to do a self appraisal then the second uh, lecture would be on management protocols day care procedures most of the procedures in hand surgery are day care procedures but there are some instances where you have major injuries and you need to uh, uh, do a, a elaborate surgery on them and the basics of surgical management preparation for surgery would be done the next is anesthesia i have sometimes been surprised that a lot of surgeons even in my specialty who have come, who come as residents they are not aware of the uh, amount of xylocaine you can use now we as surgeons use xylocaine quite liberally in our uh, suture we need to understand the options is important and sometimes we are alone when you are doing need to understand all about this drug how much we can use and how safe it is the whole problem the uh, are you able to see me yeah yeah yes sir yeah Now, we can the whole problem is when we do not understand the drug yeah uh, the whole problem is when we do not understand the drug and we are not able to understand when the complication is occurring we have had problems i mean when we were in uh, in uh, stanley sometimes we had to give the axillary block but the anesthetist was not available this was not accepted but there was a situation when we had to do it but it was important to understand when there was a complication these are things that we can also do with as we go along in the lectures and then the preparation on which side should the surgeon sit down for the right hand which side which side should, should the patient should the uh, surgeon sit for, to make it comfortable for him for instance if it is on the right hand he sit on the right foot and if it is on the left hand where do we sit these are certain small things that we don't need to understand as you know it is hand surgery is mainly the surgeon sitting down and doing the procedure comfortably then we will talk about major injuries on the hand how do we tackle with the major injuries i told you the simplest solution if there is a major injury you break it down into smaller problems and three small problems be tackled we'll go through all that as we go through the uh, lecture on ma managing major injuries on the hand and then we'll go into some theory topics for instance functional anatomy of the hand i remember when we joined medical college the first lecture was on hand and the first dissection was on the palmar rapinurosis but, but generally this is we usually forget about this as we keep going along our course now this is very important the basics of the functional and structural anatomy of the hand is what we're going to be seeing and then the evolution in embryology uh, 
I do not know if you are aware of which animal had the first hand. Just think about it. We had fish that were there in the beginning. And fish had, of course, they didn't have hands. They had only fins. When did the hand, actually the forelimb of the animal, when did that come from? When did that evolve? We'll see all that. And the embryology of the hand. What guides the embryological development of the hand? And then we'll see about the biomechanics. This is something very interesting. Uh, do you know that one single group of muscles in your body can lift the, your own weight, your weight? That is the gastrocnemius. Now the gastrocnemius group of muscles can lift your weight because you are able to stand on tiptoe. That means this muscle is able to lift your weight. Does that mean that muscle is so powerful? Not at all. It is a powerful muscle, but it is depending on levers. We'll deal with all these as we talk about the biomechanics of the hand. Then we'll be dealing with the flexor tendon injuries, extensor tendon injuries, and then the uh, fractures, management of fractures and dislocations, and nerve injuries. Nerve injuries are again something that we always see, and uh, whatever we are specialty, we come across patients with median nerve injuries, ulnar nerve injuries, and radial nerve injuries. We shall see the management of all these problems and congenital anomalies like uh, syndactyly, which is quite common. And lastly, we'll be seeing the thumb reconstruction. Thumb reconstruction is quite elaborate. I'll try to make it as simple as possible so that we're able to understand how we reconstruct the thumb. As you know, the thumb constitutes for about 40% of the function of the entire hand. So if there has been a loss of the thumb, we need to reconstruct the thumb. How are we going to reconstruct this thumb? And what are the methods by which this reconstruction can be done? This will be the last two lectures in this series. Now, having seen what are the points we're going to see, I mean, what are the lectures we're going to see as we go along, we'll come to the uh, problem of today. Today was the day six of lockdown and the learning hand surgery in the learning uh, hands uh, and uh, the uh, series. I had said the below are pictures of a patient who presented with a blunt injury of the right thumb following a trivial assault. Then uh, the patient went to a physician immediately and the physician manipulated the thumb and it became all right. That's what the patient said. The patient presented again after 10 days with inability to use the thumb. Now, this was the picture I had put up. Now, if you look at this, you can make out there is a deformity on the right thumb at the level of the metacarpal fragile joint, and the x ray shows a deformity. The questions were. What was the diagnosis and what had been done and what was missed in the management earlier? What is the interpretation of the x-ray? What is the plan now? And how would you plan the follow-up treatment for this patient and what is the prognosis? Yeah. So this is the video showing the injury. Now you can make out the deformity. You can make out a hyperextension deformity at the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb. Second is you can make out an interflexion, an interphalangeal joint flexion deformity at the thumb. So what is the problem? You can see this problem. You can see the you can see the uh, bulging, you can make out a bulge of the bone felt on the metacarpophalangeal joint. There is no flexion possible at the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb. This is a common injury that we can come across. There is interphalangeal joint flexion, active flexion, but there is no extension. <clears throat> so now, what this, the diagnosis is a dorsal dislocation of the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb. Now, we know that the uh, dislocations are named by the distal joint. For instance, 
if it is a proximal interphalangeal joint, you have got the proximal phalanx and the middle phalanx articulating at the proximal interphalangeal joint. If there is a dislocation, the dislocation is named according to the distal bone. For instance, if the middle phalanx dislocates dorsally, it's called a dorsal dislocation because that is the distal bone as far as the PIP joint is concerned. Here in this metacarpophalangeal joint, you would note that the distal bone, that is the proximal phalanx, has dislocated dorsally. So this is a dorsal dislocation of the metacarpophalangeal joint of the thumb. So now, the if you look at the x-ray, I want you to note the point there on the x-ray. You can make out this little bone. Are you able to make it out? Now, this is not an avulsion fracture. This is a normal sesamoid bone of the thumb. Normally, you have got two sesamoid bones in the thumb at the level of the metacarpophalangeal joint. These two sesamoid bones are bones with the, which are found within the insertion of the flexor pollicis brevis and the abductor pollicis brevis, which are thinner muscles. Now, if you look at this x-ray, you'll find that this, these sesamoid bones are close to the proximal phalanx. This means that the insertion of the muscles, that is the thinner muscles, is intact. However, if these bones had been present at this point, that is at the neck of the metacarpal, it would mean that the, there has been a rupture of the uh, insertion of the thinner muscles. Because it is close to the base of the proximal phalanx and the muscles are intact, if you reduce this dislocation, it will be stable because the muscles will splint the joint and not allow it to get dislocated again to a certain extent. So, this is usually done under axillary block anesthesia if it is done after a few days. Now, this patient presented after 10 days. After 10 days, what happens is the extrinsic muscles, that's the extensor pollicis longus and the flexor pollicis longus, become tight. To relax these muscles, an axillary block is given. Now, we'll see the video of how the reduction is done. <clears throat> when a reduction is done, you need to, the first maneuver you need to do is, you can see the hyperextension there. <clears throat> you need to hyperextend the metacarpophagal joint, give traction, and then flex it. Once this is done, the reduction is complete. Now, once you have done the reduction, you can ask the patient to flex. To a certain extent, the patient will be able to flex, but since the axillary block has been given, the movements may not be completely demonstrable. Here, you can see to a certain extent, the patient is able to move the thumb and the joint is stable. However, this stability, as I said, is not permanent. You need to... Uh, Stabilize further with a POP, which should, should be applied dorsally. Now, this is the picture after two weeks. A POP must be applied dorsally with the, uh, the MP joint kept in 10 degrees to off flexion to prevent it from dislocating again. So, that was the introductory lecture today. Now, uh, if there are any questions, either about the classes, I mean, it was just an introductory lecture. Now, if there are any questions about the kids that we discussed today also, please free, feel free to ask. Yeah. Any any questions from the audience? Yes. Actually, the Zoom, uh, all the noises will get mixed up now because I unmuted everyone. Sabri, any question from you? Okay. If there are no questions, oh, no. Can you okay. today? Hmm. we'll come back. Question to us. Yeah, Sanjay, uh, Sabri, say. Yeah, Sabri, what question is it? Any questions? Any questions? Nishi, you want to say something? Yes, sir. 
yeah sir i just wanted to request uh, that will the presentation slides will be available for us to download from somewhere so that no i am recording it so i'll i'll put it on lgs uh, uh, with the uh, uh, sir's permission i think they are not with downloadable that can they are watchable zoom la yes, learning general sir will be i thought sir if the slides will uh, we can get it uh, download also we can, sir, can, we can review it daily uh, meeting we can like daily illa daily anju meeting aaru meeting you, you can share the content adu subscribe panni tharu pola avaru i'll i'll do today i'll uh, uh, load it on to the youtube channel you can share it any time you want meeting kodu kudrainga aaru meeting is that okay sir is your permission sir 10 pm 9 am 10 am 11 am அப்படிን போட்டு ஷெட்யூல் போட்டு கிளாஸ் நடத்துறாங்க எல்லாம் வந்தறாங்க அத்தனை பேர் any any more questions to uh, kartikeyan sir kabiri you want to ask something uh, no no sir no questions sir sir beautiful presentation sir thanks for initiating this sir So general surgeon, we need to be knowing many things. Yeah, there is there is a, a slight uh, uh, technical glitch. Otherwise, would have we had a lot more uh, uh, audience. Sir. Tomorrow we'll come back same time, but we'll come back on Zoom, right? Is that okay, sir? Can't get answer. But uh, sir, but uh, sir, same idea. Uh, we, we'll come back on Zoom tomorrow same time. <laughs> ஒரே <laughs> <laughs> yeah we shall meet again tomorrow same time right and uh, with the, and meantime i am going to load this to um, the learning general surgery youtube channel and you can see the slides there right and i'll i'll put the link on Le- learning general surgery is it okay nishi right i'll do that so we'll end the meeting now right at 9:30 there's a, there's another one on transition cell carcinoma thank you so much thank you sir thank you kartikeyan sir thank you sir thank you sir